All right. All right. All right. All right. Well, here we go. What's up, y'all? Welcome to the uh, pilot episode of the Duval County Rams fans Ramtastic podcast. It's just uh, more or less going to be me talking about um, Ram stuff, all thing Rams, the podcast as a whole. Just me talking about things that I like, things that I don't like, things that are happening, my personal take on everything going on with the Rams. Uh, it's pretty much all, all this is going to be, and... This is on uh, a podcast form. So I got my YouTube channel where I, I do videos and I kind of give my analysis and give the news on what's going on with the Rams, you know, as we uh, as time goes on. And there are kind of shorter videos. This I kind of wanted to be more, uh, you know, like we're just kind of hanging out, talking sports at like a like at a bar or a. Or like a house party or something. So, basically, what I'm saying is, this is going to be long. And I was thinking, you know, with the first episode, I was just, it, it, it had occurred to me that I had not given a review, a personal take, on the Rams 2021 football season. I was thinking about it and I just, I realized I don't think I had done that yet. So, what I've decided to do is make it my pilot episode. We're going to talk about the 2021 season and we're going to stroll down memory lane a little bit uh, on all the things that happened, good and the bad. Uh, all the way up to our Super Bowl victory. We won the Super Bowl in 2021. Um, it's still really crazy to think about if you actually stop and consider like everything that happened. And it's pretty wild. So, you know, that uh, spoiler alert, um, as far as a review goes... Or a grade that the Rams get. Spoiler alert. I'll just go ahead and say it now. They received an A. Um, on the 2021 season. Because uh, the season was. Uh, the mission had been completed. The whole point of playing a NFL season. Is to make the tournament at the end of the season. And try to win the championship game. Win the trophy. And. Uh, end that season as the best team in uh, in the NFL. You know that's that's why they play the game is to win it, and winning being the last team standing after all the other teams are eliminated. Um, in a particular season is really crazy to think about, and the Rams did it. Um, I, I just, it's just so crazy because this team not too long ago was just so awful. <laughs> and, and now they they won the whole thing, so they get an A. Okay, spoiler alert, 2021 season, they get an A. But let's go ahead and rewind the clock a little bit, shall we? And not actually start with the 2021 season, but rather the end of the 2020 divisional playoff round in which the Rams were defeated by the Green Bay Packers and sent home in a game um, that had kind of a lot of drama to it. Uh, it was a game no one, the, no one really thought the Rams were going to win because we were so injured. Uh, we had a lot of we had a lot of stuff going on. We had, uh, I believe, Aaron Donald actually got hurt for the first time ever in his career, 
like he had a rib issue and Lord, I don't even think he played the game. I don't think he played that game. And you have John Wolford who got knocked out the week before and Jared Goff with a, a broken thumb and we got kicked out. And going into that off season, it was just it, it was it was it was a sense it was a sense because if you were like me, the Rams were like a team that felt like we were really good, but we just were we 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 just w- aren't able to get over that hill. Like, it was a feeling like we were like, I feel like this is a good team. I feel like this is a playoff team. But we're we're, we're not championship-level quality yet. Like, like it's just, we're just not quite there. And it kind of sucks because if you're not right there, because if you're in that point in building your team, if you don't get over the hump, eventually things are about to start wear in down and you're about to go kind of back down the ladder again so it's kind of a worrisome position to be in from the simple fact that you know you're kind of in a window you're in this window but you're not quite good enough yet and it's uh it's like a race to put those final touches on the team to hopefully make a championship run and I feel like for me, because this this is all gonna be from my perspective, just to let y'all know. This is a story hour with the Duval County Rams fan. And I am gonna just walk you through a story about how I viewed our 2021 season. So that is just what I was feeling in this moment in the offseason where I just felt like we were in this window and I was not sure we were going to meet expectations. Um, And a large part of that, which, and I have said this before, you know, um, was the quality of quarterback play. And I don't mean to rag on Jared Goff, all right, but... we weren't going to win the Super Bowl with Jared Goff. It just, it just wasn't going to happen. All right. I'm not trying to be a dick, Jared. It's just, it is what it is. Like there was, I did not feel there was like growth or progression with, um, with Jared. So I don't want to get too much into a tangent here, but we needed to get a new quarterback And the Rams felt the same because they orchestrated a trade for Matthew Stafford, the guy from Detroit. Now, we gave up a few first-round picks, and I'm sitting there going, you know, because I was really cool with John Wolford as our quarterback for 2021. I was, guys, I promise you, I was so confident that I didn't think we, I don't, I didn't know, like I said, if we could win the Super Bowl, but I promise y'all, I really legit think to this day that John Wolford, if given the starting position, can win the Rams games and take them at least to the playoffs. Like, I legit believe that we would have been all right with Wolford. Now, now, obviously, where we're at now, it, Matthew Stafford's the starter. Obviously, okay? But I'm giving you my perspective on things back in the day, back in real time. And in real time, I was thinking to myself, you know, Matthew Stafford, like I didn't know a whole lot about him. Like I remember, uh, I, I knew who he was. Okay, I knew who he was, and I knew that people, like in the media, and uh, 
like the Fox shows and other teams and coaches and players, whenever they mentioned him, it was it was always good. They were always like, oh man, he's Matthew Stafford's really, really amazing. He's actually really, really good. Um, you know, he needs a lot more respect. Is it, that kind of thing. You know what I mean? That kind of thing. So I, I've heard those things, but from the perspective of a Rams fan who did not watch barely any Detroit games, I I just I'm like, okay, but I just I never see him. You know what I mean? Like, I never see him in the playoffs when we get to the end. You know, that they they keep telling me this guy is good, but I, I really don't see him in the, playoff, in the playoffs. And when, he, like, he loses. Like, I, I remember anytime, like, I'm like, Staff oh, Stafford, yeah, the guy who is on the Lions and... I remember I watch him all the time on Thanksgiving, you know, as one of the Thanksgiving games because the Lions are always playing on Thanksgiving. And a lot of the time, and I'm not, like I said, I'm not trying to throw shade, but a lot of the time, the Lions would lose. All right, I'm not trying to throw shade. I'm just saying, you know, the Rams were awful too for a long time. And Matthew Stafford was the quarterback of those teams. And I just, that's kind of like what my mindset was for my opinion on Matthew Stafford. And with that in mind, I felt like I, I wanted the picks. I, I did not want to get rid of our first round picks. I'm not going to lie to y'all. I liked the trade, but I, I, I was never a point where I didn't like to trade. I like to trade. I like to trade. But I also was like, if I had a choice in the matter, I don't think I would have done it. Because I think, I I honest to God believe, we, had a John, we have John Wolford. I think we can win with him. The very least, I think he can take us to the playoffs at least. I, I figured he could at least do that. And I think he really could. And play well for us. Because uh, he, he got us in the 2020 playoffs. Y'all remember he beat Arizona. When he came in. And the Rams players. Were saying how he was going to shock the world. And Aaron Donald actually quoted. Uh, how he respected his work ethic. How John Wolford was always one of the last people to leave. The facility. This all happened. You can you, you can look at, look at, look at way back when. But. They, they love this guy, man. And he went out and, yes, he threw a pick in his first pass. And, <coughs> ooh, excuse me. And, like, the Rams didn't, like, score a touchdown that game. But he played well. And I was convinced he could help us win. So, anyway, what I'm getting at is I feel like with just him, we would have been all right. I didn't want to give up the picks for a guy who was always losing on Thanksgiving. That was the only time I would see him. And then training camp hits. And, you know, there's reports that Matthew is throwing spirals and is impressing. And you may ask yourself, well, Spirals. Duval County Rams fan, what? Why you? What? Why are you so excited about spirals? Every NFL quarterback in the league throws spirals, right? Because it's professional. You're a professional quarterback. Throwing a spiral is like a simple requirement, I believe. It's like a. It's a simple requirement. If you want to get paid all this damn money, you need to be able to throw a Chris spiral. Lots of people can do it. All right? Lots, of, maybe not as accurately or as strongly, but just the physical act of making the ball spin in a crisp spiral like fashion, a lot of people can do that. All right? And, 
you know, I'm hearing Matthew Stafford throwing dimes. He's looking accurate, you know, and you're you're asking why he's so excited. Well, again, not trying to throw shade. Jared Goff had a tendency to throw a lot of ducks, unfortunately. Jared, I'm, I swear, I'm not trying to beat you up, but, you know, it that that was just a little irritating to me. You know, seeing ducks being thrown by a our professional level quarterback, our number one draft pick. So it 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 just got a little tiresome over the years. He he could obviously throw spirals a lot of the time, you know, and Goff knows how to throw spirals, obviously. I'm not saying he doesn't know that how to throw spirals. I'm saying he also threw a lot of ducks and it was a little frustrating over the years. And in comes Matthew Stafford, and this dude's like throwing no look passes. Okay, I, I I made a video when, like, it was one of my first y'all. It was one of my first videos where like, it, it's just a a small small, simple simple clip, uh, show of Matthew Stafford throwing the football in his first training camp with the Rams, twenty twenty one, and. Uh, the dude's throwing dimes, uh, all right? It, the balls are looking crisp, like uh, NFL-level quarterback should be able to throw. And they... And, like, this dude threw, like, a no-look pass. Like, he, he, like, during, like, a scrimmage play, he just, uh, he, he just, you know, he was looking one way and he threw the other. And he completed the pass. And I'm like... Holy, holy shit. That was actually, that was pretty cool. I have not seen this kind of quarterback play on this team in so long. In so long. And for you longtime Rams fans, you know what I'm talking about. You know what I'm talking about. All right. We haven't had good, consistent quarterback play that that would lead us good just good consistent quarterback play since Kurt Warner all right one could argue Mark Bulger as well as well I'm uh I don't I don't really I don't I don't really know about that because it he Mark Bulger was good but it wasn't I don't know I don't know. You could argue Mark Bulger, but it just didn't feel like a franchise quarterback. You know, it, it felt like someone who kind of. It, 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 I'm not going to get it. I'm, I might make a. This might be a podcast episode in the future, where it, it just uh, Mark Bulger kind of was the beneficiary of Kurt being unceremoniously uh, benched as the starter. But that is a story for another day. We're staying with uh, 2021 season. And we had not seen good, solid, consistent quarterback play since him. And through all these years, all these years, okay, no disrespect to our former quarterbacks out there. But Lord have mercy, the quarterback play was awful awful the team was awful the the quarterback it you you got we had a few that would give good games here and there but boys i'm sorry i it was awful awful quarterback play and then we get matthew stafford he's throwing dimes he's throwing no look passes i'm getting i'm i'm getting really excited i'm like holy shit do we have our quarterback? But that would remain to be seen as it was only like July, July of last year. And so the preseason comes around, all right? They, backups have their time. Uh, young man uh, Perkins, is it Brian Perkins? Oh man, I'm sorry, man. 
God, I'm blanking on the name. I'm sorry, but he's uh he made the team as a third quarterback. I thought he played pretty well in the preseason. And uh, a few of the other guys played pretty well. And uh, some surprise cuts. Uh, Lawler being cut kind of surprised me, you know. But there was a few cuts that uh, were surprising, as they generally are in training camp. But it's um, it, overall, I thought it went well. I liked the camp, how it went. And so now we're in the season. Now we're at... <laughs> Now we're actually in the 2021 season. And, well, we start the season playing the uh, Chicago Bears. Okay, a, uh, it's, it's at home. It is a home game. And it is Matthew Stafford's first game. Uh, you know, everyone's wondering what's the Rams offense going to look like. What's it going to look like post Jared Goff? Because Goff was our quarterback for like four or five years. So everyone's kind of like, you know, uh, kind of feel like this guy's going to be better, but you never really know. And it's the first season, and it is extremely difficult to learn a whole new offense, albeit a complicated one, one that's hard to learn. Okay, Sean's off. From what I hear, I, I don't. I'm just a fan, all right? I'm not a coach. I'm just a fan. But from what I hear, it's a complicated offense, obviously. And so it's it would stand to reason Matthew Stafford probably would take a little time to get to learn it. You know, he, he can memorize the plays, but he's going to have to get used to the timing with the receivers, throwing where to who, and... Uh, the cadence and how everyone moves, how the other players, like their cuts, what their strengths are, things like that. There, there are things, these are things you work on in practice, like to kind of get into a rhythm because you want the offense to be like a live, like, it, it, like, uh, it, like martial arts kind of, kind of like a live animal because you want all the pieces to be moving uh, fluidly, like together, the receivers, the quarterbacks, the running backs, it, it, it has to be fluid and uh, like an extension of your body uh, for these. I've been drinking a little bit, so just, just bear with me, bear with me, all right? I've been, I got my gym beam. It's, uh, you know, I don't got to work tomorrow, so I'm kind of just... You know, kicking back. You know, just kicking back. And I'm sitting there, okay, and that, that's the question. That's the question. How will, how will it look? How will the team look? Well, they go out there and uh, looks great. Matthew Stafford throws a touchdown, like a 65-yard touchdown pass to uh, Van Jefferson. I believe it was the second play from scrimmage. And if I remember correctly, I do believe it was his first ever pass as a Ram. It was either his first or his second. I got I, I don't exactly remember, guys, but I think it was his first pass as a Ram, a 65 yard touchdown strike to Van Jefferson. And I'm going nuts. I'm I'm freaking out. I'm jumping up and down. I'm like, oh my god! Did you see that spiral? Did you did you see how clean how clean that ball looked? And I'm just I was just so I'm like, here we go. Let's go. Let's go, y'all. Let's go. Let's let's get it. Let's get it. Let's let's get this party rolling. And let's get this party started. And and they would go on to win thirty four to fourteen, and they look they look damn good. They look damn good that game. And I was like, hell yeah, this is this is we 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 might got we might have something here. And we we move on week two, 
Uh, we go to Indianapolis in a hard game, a uh, hard-fought game with the Colts. Um, you know, Carson went led team. I thought our defense played pretty well that that game. Uh, it was a close game, 27-24. Colts were a very tough team. Uh, but I thought we looked good. You know, obviously a team with a first-year quarterback, you know, learning the offense. And uh, all things considered, I thought we looked good. I thought the defense looked good. I thought we looked good. I think we were looking solid. Okay? We're 2-0, and and it's it, it, it's solid. It's kind of solid. So, with that, we move on to week three, in which we play Tampa Bay. And at this point in time, Tampa Bay is the defending Super Bowl champions, all right? They got Tom Brady, you know, and I have my own feelings on the man, and I will get into that later. Um, I think, I just, I don't think he deserves all the all the um, praise that he gets. But uh, like I said, that's another conversation for another day that I will, that I'll get into later. I'm not a fan. And it's, basically what i'm saying and but he is a good quarterback and tampa bay's looking good they're looking strong and the word is they retained all their players the super bowl team which was a surprise because most teams generally lose some players the year after they win a super bowl and tampa bay was able to retain all of them so a lot of people thought, well, because they have Bruce Arians and they have Tom Brady, well, of course they're going to run it back and win it again. Of course they are. Of course they are. It, it's just set in stone, ain't it? Set in stone. So there was a lot of love going on for the Bucks, and rightfully so. They were the Super Bowl champs. They looked strong winning it, too, against the Chiefs. And, yeah, they were a strong team. They are a strong team. We're going to have issues with them this year. And it's uh, it's going to be hard. But that's they are a good team. And at that point that last year, you know, a lot of people thought they were going to repeat. And, and they very well could have. Well, they ran into a certain team that uh, eliminated them. That's coming up soon. So stay tuned for that. Anyway, so we go in uh, and we win. We win 34 24. It was, I thought we looked good. Um, I thought we looked real strong. Uh, I know uh, Sean. I know Sean uh, was kind of running. Up and down the sidelines, you know, with Deshaun Watt, Deshaun Watts, Deshaun Jackson scoring a touchdown. All right. And we look good. Uh Robin Krause got knocked out by Terrell Lewis. That was crazy. But we look good. We look good. So we're sitting at three and oh. And I'm I'm liking what I'm seeing. I'm liking what I'm seeing. We're looking strong, looking good. But uh, then we move on to week four. We play Arizona at home. That is our first loss. We lose 37-20. to 20, And uh, they pretty much whooped us that game. Uh, Kyler Murray made us look real stupid running around and twisting our ankles. And just we were just running around with chickens with our heads cut off. I remember I think Kenny Young got juked out of his shoes on one play. It, it was hard to watch. It was crazy, but it they they played well. Uh people were loving the Arizona Cardinals this time of the year last year. What what that time of the year last year. And rightfully so. They they're they're a strong team. Kyler Murray was playing good and they whooped us. Uh 37-20. And well I was like, shit, Arizona's good this year. You know, we had beaten them eight straight times, and they whooped us. 
So there is someone, either yet another team we're going to have to worry about. So moving on, we play at Seattle. We win 26 17. Um, I thought it was a good bounce back game for us. That was a Thursday night game. And, um, you know, it's, I, I thought it was a good bounce back game. I think Geno Smith came in at one point, looked real good for them. But uh, it was a good win. We would then go on to the Giants and we smashed them 38 to 11. Then uh, the Detroit game, you know, we played Jared and uh, the Lions came out strong. And they looked really good, but, you know, we won 28-19. That game was a lot closer than I uh, really anticipated. I really didn't. Uh, Dan Campbell was, like, doing onside kicks and fake punts. And they, they just, they were really trying to win that game. And I suppose I got to respect them for that, for showing uh, some fight. And uh, they... So we were able to etch out the win, uh, 28-19, which then we would move on to Houston. Uh, we dominated them uh, pretty good, but then they came back, but we still won pretty pretty comfortably, 38-22. Uh, and then started the dreaded no-win November, in which the Rams were lost three straight, beginning with the Tennessee Titans, uh, in which it was a game where we just look physically outmatched. And that was one of my biggest, biggest criticism of the team last year was the fact that despite how good we looked, despite how good we looked, there was... It, it just kept nagging at me. It, it just kept nagging at me that... That despite how good we looked, we tend to struggle against more really kind of physical, in-your-face, uh, strong, like, power-running kind of football teams. And, and, and listen. Listen. I got to keep it real. That's just what I saw, okay? It just it looked like a team that was really talented but got kind of hit in the jaw would get hit in the jaw a few times and had a tendency to then struggle. Okay? And look, I'm just it was worrisome because that's effectively what got us kicked out of the 2020 playoffs against Green Bay. Because they were just able to run the goddamn football down our throat. And it just, it was just something I felt was going to keep us from winning the Super Bowl. I, I felt that if we did not get that corrected sooner rather than later, we would once again find ourselves in probably a wild card divisional round elimination. Is what I thought. L legitimately. Because that's important. Because in January football. Things get physical. Things. You, you can do all the planning you want. But there, there's just comes a point. Where you're just continuously beating. On the dude. Like the lines are crashing into each other. Every play. And if you're just beating that. Uh, illegally mind you. If you're just legally hitting these dudes physically as hard as you can, it's, you know, you, the other team generally doesn't want to play anymore uh, at the end of the game. And you have a good um, chance to come out as the victor because then you kind of are the ones controlling the game, controlling, like, the, the flow of it. So... It's something the Rams, I felt, would fall victim to in recent years under Sean McVay. Just, not, just what I thought. I felt uh, my analysis was accurate, personally. 
Um, you know, like I said, not trying to throw shade, but I felt that's I felt that was accurate. That was at the end of the day, it's my opinion, but I felt that was accurate for the Rams. And I felt that if we didn't correct it, we would be we, we just wouldn't be able to win the Super Bowl. And the Rams had so much pressure on them to win the Super Bowl because everyone wants to clown on us for trading away picks like they're going out of style, um, you know, signing these big contracts to the star players around the league. And um, you know, I, I can tell you firsthand, it rubs some people the wrong way from the other teams. You know, tr trust me, I, I get I get roasted a little bit for it. You know, seeing seeing that the Rams going out and you know buying their buying their championship. You know, signing all these these uh, these star players, all that bullshit. You know what I mean? So all that hater bullshit. You know that they're they're just you know, mad because because their team didn't win the Super Bowl, that their team didn't, with a first-year quarterback in a new system, in operating in a way no one's ever done before, and how everyone was clowning on the Rams that, oh, you, all these star players, all these personalities, they're never going to be able to mesh. They're never going to be able to mesh. The Rams will never win. And we would get clowned for that by so many people. By so many people. And they got... Some of these people are so salty that we were able to win it all. That we were able to win the Super Bowl. And, and just... And just completely... Completely... Prove everyone wrong. This team, I I am so proud of this team because everyone was saying how this format was not gonna work. It was not gonna work. And we and they did it. They won the Super Bowl. And now you got so many people salty about us. So many people. And it it was it's it's even more evident now that we won the Super Bowl, but at this point last year, this no win November, you know, people took this as an opportunity to say, "See, hey, look, see what's going on," you know. And so I'm sure, and and you had me bitching up a storm too <laughs> during during that uh, losing streak after we lost to the Titans game. I was I was so salty. <laughs> I was so salty, guys, because I could see where the season was going to go for us. And I was just, it was just, I was salty about it. And I'm a fan, so maybe it wasn't warranted, you know what I mean? But, like, I was, I'm a fan, so fans are emotional. I was salty when we got manhandled by the Tennessee Titans. And, and our offensive line could not hold a rush. And congrats to Tennessee. They whooped us 28-16. And things did not get better next week as we then got embarrassed by our division rival, San Francisco, a team we had not beaten in, uh, what was it, like five straight attempts? I, I think, like, maybe at this point in the season it was four straight. I think it was four straight attempts. Because they act, they actually swept us this year. Can y'all believe that shit? That they actually did sweep us this year. That's kind of crazy. And well, they 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 beat the whole they beat the hell out of us in San Francisco. Uh, there's just really no other way to put it. You know, that's uh, it was the time where Robert Woods unfortunately got injured. Uh, but we traded for Odell Beckham, so it was Odell Beckham's first game. And uh, they didn't look good, you know, and I don't blame that on Odell. Odell had been in the building only a few days, so you don't expect them to know everything right away. But, you know, they tried going deep on the first play, 
uh, did not work. Matthew got picked, and they just they ran the ball on us so much, <laughs> and, and so much. And like I was saying, like I was saying, we get manhandled by Tennessee. All right, we get manhandled by Tennessee the week prior. We then go to San Francisco, another team who is known throughout the league to be a kind of a a team that plays bully ball, you know, that plays uh, that physical brand we were just talking about. And, and, and damn, uh, uh, well, it was like 47 times. They rushed the ball like 47 times, ran it down our damn throw. We couldn't do a damn thing to stop them. Couldn't do a damn thing. And they whooped us. And <sighs> it sucked. It, it it really sucked. But, you know, we were, it, it, it was the same problems at this point. I'm like, well, y'all better figure out. Y'all better, y'all better get with it because, you know, we lost to two straight physically dominant teams. And we were kind of having this stigma on us that, we that that's how you could beat us was to kind of slap us around effectively until we wanted to quit playing football but spoiler alert we do get pretty physical at the end of the year mind you this is just what i felt in real time back back last year And we would then move on to our bye week. And it got some much needed rest. So did that. And then we went to Green Bay, in which we got stomped again. Uh I thought they I thought they looked better than they did the previous two weeks uh before the bye week. Um I thought they played a lot more that played a lot more physically um in the game. It was noticeable. I do remember in real time, you know, uh, it, it, it was, it was it, in real time, it was, you know, I was salty two weeks in a row. We got the bye week, you know, so no Ram football there. And then uh, we come back and we get, we get stomped by Green Bay. But I was a little encouraged because I felt we were a little more physical in that game. We didn't get completely manhandled. And uh, uh, Cooper Cup, uh, that th- there were certain players on this team that, w- when I'm criticizing them of this point last year, that they really didn't play physical. That that's not for everybody. There were players on this team that played very very physically from beginning to end of this year. Cooper Cup was one of them, and Cooper Cup was like manhandling Green Bay defensive backs that stood out to me. I remember I remember during that game despite the fact that we lost seeing Cooper Cup do that for some reason that just made me feel really good about Cup and made me feel really good of where the Rams could be because I could through I could kind of see that they knew what the issue was. Do you know what I mean? Like I could see it's almost like I could see that they obviously could tell whether they agreed with it or not that they had kind of this this reputation in 2021 that they're a little soft that I you know, it's just it's just how it was. It's it's just and whether you agree with it or not, that was kinda the that was like what was talked about. And watching Cooper Cup and, and the whole team as a whole play more physically in Green Bay, despite the loss, made me feel like okay, there's still hope. They can still address it. I just don't know if it's going to be enough against these bigger teams 
like these bigger, more physically dominant teams that like to rush, specifically our defense. I felt we struggled with the run uh, a lot last year, to be honest with you. Uh, I know stat-wise, uh, if I'm not mistaken, they're pretty high, but, but trust me. Trust me, they were struggling against the run. They were struggling against the run last year, and it was killing us. And it would kill us in the playoffs like it did the previous year against the Packers. And I could see it was trying to be addressed. And I'm like, okay, okay, let's, all right. Okay, let's, let's see where this goes. See where this goes. I think I think they get it. I think they get it. And well, they play Jacksonville. <laughs> they play Jacksonville next. Uh, we stomped their asses pretty good, thirty-seven to seven. Uh, Jacksonville, um, as you all know, and certainly I know as well, certainly is never much of a threat in football games, unfortunately. But you know, I feel like they will. You know, which makes for non-entertaining games, though I will say this. Uh, the game I actually went to last year, they played the Buffalo Bills. Jacksonville actually beat them. That was crazy. That that was that was crazy. I couldn't believe that. I was at that game, and, <laughs> and the Jaguar fans were just going nuts. It was crazy. But we we beat we beat them down pretty pretty well. We beat them down pretty well. Then we uh, go to Arizona, an important game where some bullshit happened, where a bunch of our players couldn't play the actual game because uh, some of them, you know, tested positive for certain things, and I guess some of them were hurt, and a bunch of them just couldn't play the game, and we were given like hours' notice, and. Uh, we still went out and with some backup players, some uh, practice squad players, if I remember correctly, and we defeated Arizona 30 to 23. So hell yeah. Follow it up with um, victories at Minnesota, then Baltimore, then that disappointing loss. Uh, in overtime with San Francisco, a game where we played so well in the first half, 17 nothing lead, they come back and beat us in overtime. So that that San Francisco curse just kept going. It was six straight games at this point. And uh, what stung even more about this whole thing was the fact that they made the playoffs because of that. Effectively, if we were able to beat them, we would have eliminated them from uh, joining the playoffs. And, um, you know, so they made the playoffs. So that was just uh, uh extra little twist of the knife, you know, and knowing that they then made the playoffs and there was that fear or that concern that we would face them in the playoffs and uh, and they would eliminate us, which would have been a disaster. So, considering we were hosting this year's Super Bowl, it was preferred that either if we didn't make it, we would hopefully hope that San Francisco would also not make it and not win the Super Bowl in our own house. In its, in its first year of opening. That just... It, its first year of host... It, pardon me. Posting the Super Bowl. It just... That just would have been... <laughs> I, I don't know if we would have been able to come back from that. We would have been roasted. We would have been roasted about that. Until the, until, until the end of our days... So it would prefer the, so the fact that we effectively gave them a playoff spot, um, like I said, just a little extra twist of the knife. And 
Well, we would have to worry about that later because we would were uh, slated to play Arizona first. We uh, pretty much dominated them, you know, uh, beat them 34 to 11. Uh, Kyler Murray, Cliff Kingsbury looked shook. Uh, we had them handled. So we effectively eliminated the Cardinals. And next week, we go on to play Tampa Bay to defending Super Bowl champs in a game that was very exciting. We blew a pretty big lead with some uncharacteristic, I think that's how you say it, um, fumbles, this, that, and the other. But uh, we were able to pull it out. Uh, Matthew Stafford stole the soul out of uh, one Tom Brady and uh, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers by leading a drive with like 30 seconds to go uh, in a tie ball game. <laughs> and he like launches it like 60 yards. And Cooper Cup, man, Cooper Cup catches the damn ball with like seconds to go. They go up, it, they spike the thing. And then uh, our kicker comes out, Matt Gay, and wins it for us effectively as time expires. And it was just done so because I could have sworn we were going to overtime. I could have sworn we were going to overtime. And the fact that we were able, able to beat them in their own house was just so, it, it was so satisfying. Just so satisfying. And really, really proud of how they played. Uh, you know, they are, the Rams at this point in time are playing much more physically. Uh, the the team as a whole, specifically the defense, uh, was stopping the run. They and they looked they looked physical. They looked nasty. Uh, they looked like a team who was getting real tired of people like me sitting on my sitting on my couch, uh, calling them, the, uh, saying that they're not physical enough. So I'm sure that motivated them, and it showed in the playoffs as they really played more dominantly in the trenches. And Ashawn Robinson being a key member of that. He played so well during this playoff run. And I don't he you're you're he's never really gonna get the credit because Aaron Donald is uh you, you know he's the he's the he's the star of the show. You know, he's the star of the show. He's the star defensive tackle who is a Hall of Fame talent. And he's always the one that's talked about. But Ashawn plays so physically. You know, he, he holds up the line. He stops the run. And he was a key part in winning these last stretch of games in the playoffs. So, shout out to Ashawn. And... Then we the NFC Championship game, we break the six game losing streak uh, that San Francisco had on us in another game that felt like we could lose. These last stretch of games were so exhausting. They were so exhausting because it just felt like, and from after the from Air, from Tampa Bay on, from that divisional Tampa Bay game on. Every game felt like we were going to lose at some point in the game. Like in the third quarter, like late in the game. There were moments in all of these games, late in the game, where I felt like, man, I... Man, we, we, we might lose this. We might lose this because our offense is looking terrible. And, and just... They're, the other team is just kind of eking away, like cutting away at our defense, slowly but surely, and we don't seem to have an answer. And in this team just somehow always kind of found a way 
to get back in it. It was... It was a pleasure to watch because th that kind of resiliency is something I have not seen from this team in a very long time. In a very long time. And they needed it, and that's what effectively won us. That, that That's what had us, you know, after not winning a game in November, go on to beat, dominate, a, dominate. A division rival, a, a division rival, mind you, in Arizona that people were loving on. You know, people were loving the Cardinals and Kyler Murray. He was the next big thing, and you know he they were popular. We crushed them. Tampa Bay defending Super Bowl champs. We look like we're gonna lose. It's a tight game. We somehow find a way to come back, eliminate Brady, retire him, because. It wasn't long after we beat them that he decided to retire. And uh, and as you all know, he has since come back. And, well, welcome back, Tom. Because it appears to me that we were the reason that you retired. And we were the reason that you came back. So, welcome back. And we eliminated him. Stole their soul in the final seconds of that divisional round game. Okay, a game it felt like was we were going to let slip through our fingers and I was going to go freaking insane losing to Brady, but we pulled it off and then we would go on to beat a team who has owned our asses for six straight games, who has bullied us and just had this mental hold. Well, I don't know if they maybe for the fan base, maybe maybe for the play. Even if they didn't, they 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 knew the pressure was on them. All right, and I could see it, man. Sean was stressed. This <laughs> Matthew was stressed. All these, all the, I could see it on their faces. I could see it on their faces. That Lord, we need to win. <laughs> we need to win this game to get these. Freaking people in the media, these fan bases off our asses. We need to get them off our asses. Okay, they just had that. They just had that look. <laughs> they just had that look. It's like, damn, man, we gotta play the team that has beat us six straight times in a game to go to the Super Bowl, where they could win it in our house. When they could win the Super Bowl in our house, it would have been a disaster. A complete disaster. These were the stakes. These were the stakes, y'all, for this NFC Championship game. And Lord have mercy, they, 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 they pulled it out. They pulled it out. We were down by 10 going into the fourth quarter. And... They found a way. They just they they found a way. They were physical. They were physical. They were resilient. Matthew. They they took all kinds of cheap shots from this team because San Francisco was throwing a bunch of cheap shots this game, and they weathered that storm. They you know kept calm, and Matthew led the team to a victory, and Aaron Donald sealed it by rushing him so bad that he had to throw the ball up for grabs and Travian Howard, a man we just signed back, uh, picked it off. We win the game. We're NFC champions. Holy shit. That was nuts. That game was fucking, that game was exhausting. And we then two weeks later go to the Super Bowl in our house. And in a game. This because this game felt like it should have been a blowout. And it just there was so much drama going on. It, everyone was talking about like Sean was about to retire. Aaron's about to retire. Who's doing what right? Which coach is it, it like coaching the right way for these two weeks before the Super Bowl. 
it was just it, there was a there was a lot going on, but I felt like we could have crushed this team, and it looked like in this Super Bowl we were on our way to doing that because we score instantly. You know, we get seven, and then Odell kind of goes down, unfortunately, because he looked like he was going to be in the running to be Super Bowl MVP had he stayed healthy that whole game because he was looking great. He was looking real good. The, Odell was like, it, it looked like he was our game plan on offense. Like, I felt like he was a, such a huge piece in that game and when he went down it just it, it we we got really put in a kind of a bad spot because we had so many injuries throughout this year it was such a long season we we played so many physical teams we got beat up and a bunch of our guys were injured and they weren't in the game so believe it or not we were kind of depleted with like offensive weapons and Odell going down really really kind of messed things up for him and uh the Bengals took advantage of that 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 and I don't want to sound like I'm dismissing the Bengals the Bengals played damn well like Joe Burrow was good and they were Really, they fought really, really hard. You could tell, like, they wanted to win this so bad. And we could not run the football on them. Like, that D-line shut us down. We couldn't do a damn thing with the running game. That's something we need to improve on this year. Because we can't rely on Matthew Stafford and Cooper Cup bailing us out in the in the playoffs again. We, we just, we have to be able to run the football consistently in January. And, you know, it's just, we, we, we there's some question marks there, and uh, I think we can have it, that this is a discussion for another day, but the, uh, the running, running, running attack is something that we're going to have to uh, try and improve this year if we want to repeat. And Cincinnati in the Super Bowl shut us down, and Odell gets hurt, and you know Jalen gets his helmet ripped off, and we're down by double digits in the Super Bowl. And once again, it's looking like it's not going to go our way. And I'm like. I'm like, fuck, man. Like, I'm like, dude, again, Sean, again, we, we go to the Super Bowl and our offense is stagnating out uh, despite all the injuries, I know. But, like, it just, and our defense is getting withered away as the, the, the Bengals is chipping away at us. But they find a way to come back. And our defense earn it. Aaron Donald and Ernest Jones, they played out of their minds in the Super Bowl, dude. And our defense is the reason we're champions. Because while our offense was trying to figure things out, like the Bengals, we had to keep Joe Burrow and those crop of young wide receivers that are like the best in the league on the Bengals. We had to keep, they, we, they had to keep them, keep them at bay. And uh, that was not an easy thing to do. And they were able to do it. And you know, Matthew, that, that final drive, dude, like all it was was Matthew Stafford, Cooper Cup. It, it got to a point where it's like, look, we're down by four. We need a touchdown. <laughs> and it just throw with the cup every play. Just throw with the cup every play. Nothing else is working. Throw the cup on every play. This is this this is it. This is our last shot. This is our last shot. It's the final drive of the Super Bowl. We we don't have. There's no more time. There, there there's no more time. You just 
throw with the cup every play and let's see what happens and that's what they did and they they just they went down the field you had a fourth and one cup pick that up because he's a, a savage and, and you know we're, we're moving down the field we're having people backup players step up Bryson Hopkins uh Nick Scott uh Kendall Blanton um Schwarnick, Schwarnick dropped a few, but you, you know what? That's all right. He he still played well. He needs to work on his catches, but overall he did play pretty well. You know, our Ashawn on defense, all all, all of them, dude. dude a, a whole bunch of like great gains. These backup players had to. They had to play well. They had to. And. In a high stakes situation for football, I thought they responded pretty well. And they are a big reason why we were able to go down there, get that final touchdown, and then have Aaron Donald take the lead, take the lead, mind you, then have Aaron Donald finish the game. By showing off how much of a Hulk he is, by a third third and one, he like grabs the running back with one arm, drags him back. He doesn't get a first down. Fourth down, he goes and just effectively sacks Joe Burrow, ends the game. Uh, Rams are Super Bowl champions. And I just felt so like shock was my biggest reaction. Like it, I felt like I was going to, I didn't know what I was going to be feeling like if we would have won this game. And ultimately as happy as I was, it was, there wasn't a lot of emotions involved. It was more, I was just like in a state of shock. Like I, honest to God, couldn't believe they had actually done it. Like I felt like, I was like, okay, there's, there's, what's the next game? What's the next game? I just kept feeling like, well, there's still another game to be played. There's still another game to be played. Uh, what's the next game? What's the next game? And then, Next thing you know, it's like, no, there is, there is no next game. There is no next game. That's it. That's it. You you've, you you guys have done it. You, you've done it. You've won the Super Bowl. There's no more games. And from a fan's perspective that has watched this team and a team that has was so below had a such a below average product a losing football team for the majority of my adult life and to see that team in the span of a uh, like five six years go from that team to the super bowl champs was really jarring for me for me from my perspective it was really jarring and they did it like in a way that wasn't really traditional, you know, by trading away all the picks, by uh, getting all the big name stars in a, a a team game that requires a lot of chemistry. And sometimes some of these athletes are a little full of themselves. You know, they really need to get off their high horse a little bit, a lot of them. But a, a lot of these stars have that kind of mentality. And, like, as a result, usually it doesn't, like, mesh when there's a bunch of them together on a team. And then the team doesn't perform as well despite having really good players on the team. B because they don't, they're, they're not bought in. You know, they're not working as a team because of their 
because of how they view themselves. For some of them, not all of them. Not all of them, but a lot of them. So that was the question and why some people were a little, and we were like, well, can this model really work? And because of the culture Sean had implanted into the Rams, we were able to make it work. They were able to make it work. They bought in, worked as a team, and they they won it. And that was kind of crazy. So, from all that, I give them an A. You get an A, Sean. And Matthew, you get an A. Cooper Cup, you get an A. Uh, Cam Akers, you get an A for coming back less than a year after removed from an ACL tear. You get an A. Uh, Aaron Donald, you get an A. A. Sean Robinson, you get an A. Um, uh, uh, Ramsey, you get an A. All of y'all get an A. All of you, man. All of you get an A. Brian Allen, you get an A. For making me kind of have to eat crow. I, I was really not bought in the Brian Allen at all. But, um, I mean, shit, what can I say? What can I say? He, he performed very well down the stretch. So, you get an A, Brian Allen. And you get an A, offensive line. You get an A, uh, Sean, again, you get an A, Raheem, you, you get an A, Joe D. Camillus, you get an A, Les, everyone gets an A, okay? Everyone gets an A, y'all pulled it off. Y'all somehow pulled it off, all right? Everyone gets an A. Rams fans, you get an A. You get an A. All right? Them uniforms, them alternate white uniforms, get an A. Get an A. I still need to get mine. Th those crisp white uniforms with the Super Bowl logo on it, that is an A. That is A quality. Much better than the bone. Much better than the bone. That's I'm not hating on the bone. It's just I prefer the white, okay? I prefer the white. I think it looks a lot better. It pops more under the lights and it goes better with like the yellow pants and the white. It just it goes better with the other colors. The 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 gray just I don't know, man. It just it just like I said I didn't hate it, but it just it, it just didn't go with the other colors as well as the white. That's all I'm saying. But that gets an A. Everybody gets an A. And now we are in a position where we are trying to repeat and training camp is around the corner. So we shall see what happens. We shall see what happens. But I am going to get off this mic because I am losing my voice and I'm tired. So good to talk to y'all. I will catch you guys on the next one. And as always... And as always, go Rams.